<laughs> well, good morning, everyone. And, um, and Kenji's currently acting as bouncer, uh, letting people <laughs> in. And so we've got many queued there, Ben and Kenji, at two meters distance, I hope, from each other. <laughs> we have quite a few. Uh, 18 in the room now. Yeah, and not too many waiting in the lobby. I, I am adding them as they flood in. Very good, very good. So, well, good morning, everyone, and um, I shall get things uh, started here. That's um, so I'm very pleased to have David Hilton with us. And um, actually, not very long ago, uh, I took my um, FE and skills um, to Edinburgh College to meet with the principal and with uh, John Buglis as well. And um, All right, good. The, um, Edinburgh College's uh, new digital strategy, which mm -hmm. I've yet to see, but I look forward to seeing sometime in the future. Um, obviously, um, I'm, I come from a background in JISC of actually being manager of JISC Legal and that was set up to deal with organisational um, difficulties in, in terms of the legal aspects. But it was a time when JISC had recognised that as well as providing bandwidth uh, and all the technical solutions, then you need much more than that and you need to switch on people to be able to use this technology. And mm -hmm. what David's going to give us today is uh, the experiences around digital skills and uh, Without any further ado, I shall hand over to David. Thanks. I'll just share my uh, screen now, uh, Jason, uh, if that's okay. And I'll just bring up the presentation. Let me know if you can't hear me clearly. Uh, and I'll readjust my mic or whatever I need to do. So can I just make sure everybody can hear me? Loud and clear, David. Thanks. Right. So... First of all, let me introduce myself. Uh, my name's David Hiddleston. Uh, I have a role at Ember College as a curriculum leader in core and essential skills. Uh, the focus is actually digital skills for me in the college and it's delivering to levels three, four, five and six. Uh, so traditionally we deliver uh, core skills ICT uh, to a range of vocational areas. Uh, but we're also now looking at an alternative programme as well to the Core Skills ICT, uh, and that includes us developing some bridging units like Embra College units itself with some groups. Uh, the digital literacy units that have come on board, which I'm going to talk about further uh, on in the presentation, will be something that's an alternative as well. So, what I've found uh, over the last two weeks, there has been a sudden increase of digital learning and delivery. Uh, but the difficulty is, how well has our students and staff uh, for online learning and delivery? Now, there's been issues with availability of digital devices, uh, broadband, internet access, and also digital literacy skills itself. However, what has actually been a real positive is the whole FE sector has actually embraced uh, digital skills and digital learning. And we're finding our way through uh, things and so is our learners as well. So suddenly for digital literacy and digital skills not being, uh, uh, you know, number one, it suddenly overnight it has become number one. So I suddenly decided I need to revisit this and have a look at it. And that's why I've come up with the title Digital Literacy Revisited. Uh, there's going to be two questions uh, as part of this presentation, which I'm looking for comments uh, from each individual. If you want to do that, it's not mandatory. And if you actually comment in the chat window area, uh, so there'll be two questions. The first question is, what is digital literacy? What does it mean to you and your role? Or what does it mean to your organization? So if you, if you take, for example, what Jason's mentioned already, Edinburgh College has a digital strategy. Uh, and as part of that digital strategy, it will include digital skills and digital literacy. So what does it mean to you? So if you just type away, and what I'm going to do with these comments after uh, this presentation is finished, I'll actually uh, gather them all and put them, put them into some sort of creative mind map uh, so that uh, you'll have access to, to afterwards. 
and hopefully I can see some of these comments. So the last, first one from Owen Freel is the ability to navigate the current technology opportunities to get the best out of it for yourself and others. Yeah, that's good. Uh, S. Sterling, key part of my role in the college digital. Yeah, spot on. Yeah. I only want to spend about a minute on this. It's just to get it started. The knowledge of ability to use technology and applications. That's that's a good one. Clear embedding of digital skills into every unit. Yeah, that's from Rick Way Wayman. Yeah, uh, Rick's at Embra College. Uh, Scott Connor, the ability to use digital tools effectively in order to undertake the functions required by your organization and your role. Also ability to engage with new tools, yeah. I'll give it another 30 seconds and then I'll, I'll move on to my uh, definition of what digital literacy is. Right, a lot of good comments there. And please keep typing away while I'm talking, so don't feel that that, that, that has to stop. Please type in away, and uh, hopefully I, I can gather all that and put into some sort of uh, mind map and then share it. So my uh, definition to effectively engage with a range of digital tools and digital technologies to create, navigate, manipulate, and evaluate information for learning, life, and work. Uh, I think that's very, very important. Now, I've based that definition on uh, the JISC definition. Uh, and this presentation will be shared after, after, the present, after the session. But it's the capabilities which fit someone for living, learning, and working in a digital society. Now, I quite like uh, the JISC definition and how I've actually de delivered for many years is based on a framework, a diagram. And it's the six elements. Uh, and you'll find that there is a, a diagram there, which is uh, grouped together and they all overlap. And these six elements, I actually start thinking about when I put an assessment task together. And also think about what does the learner need? What is relevant? What is meaning, meaningful to them? So I looked at the information media and data, data literacy uh, part of it. And uh, within the sports students, they looked at uh, collecting data through uh, a Fitbit. And then we would actually take it into Excel, input it. It was something relevant to the, voc the vocational area. And then they would put it into a presentation where we would use Prezi. They also used digital creation as part of their, their digital skills development. So we shopped uh, them uh, using video by capturing their, their, their sports drills and then editing them and putting them into a blog or to showcase what they can do or put them up on YouTube. So I quite like the six elements, uh, and they don't all have to be used, but as part of digital literacy and a part of 2020, these are all essential elements. I worked on a digital literacy uh, for teachers project uh, in 2013 to 2015, and it was a partnership with Ember College and Delhi University where we put a digital uh, literacy skills program together, uh, teaching Indian teachers digital literacy. And the first real issue we had was, when we went along and developed this as a co-creation, we found that suddenly that we had to get beyond what the general IT skills are. So they weren't using any open source tools. They weren't looking at uh, working online, uh, working in forums, uh, look, not looking at any other software tools apart from your traditional Microsoft Office tools, which is great. And that is very much part of uh, a delivery, but we wanted to get beyond just the basics of IT skills. Now, digital literacy is very open-ended. Uh, and why I use that example 
is because when we went out there, we were thinking delivering basic IT skills. But it then turned into really a digital literacy program, which was developed. Uh, and the, over a two year period, we did manage to uh, put a program together where we got uh, each teacher to look at uh, different tools and different uh, ways of communicating with their own students. And it was over 100 teachers across that two years, and each teacher worked on a different campus. They're now sharing that, and there's good examples out there uh, where they have run their own programs on digital literacy for teachers. So that's what really opened my mind to it, and that's the reason why I'm revisiting it now, because I feel we're at the stage again where there is a lot of teachers now actually having to use other digital literacy literacy tools other than what they normally use. Uh, so the good the, the, the good example is uh, Office 365. Uh, my students contacted me. Uh, they haven't got Word on, on, on their uh, computer at home. Uh, well, they have because Office 365 is free and part of a student's induction is they have access to Office 365. Uh, so it's just basic things like that that uh, people haven't been really fully aware of, uh, but it's not until the last two weeks that we've have to go on into that space. Uh, the motivation uh, for learners is making it relevant and meaningful to them, uh, but it's also integrated into the vocational ward. So the example I've given here is a learner studying hairdressing could develop digital skills by uh, using uh, WordPress and in Instagram to post examples of their hairdressing work. Uh, that then creates like an e-portfolio for them and it also can be a way of promoting and showcasing their work. Another example is a learner studying vehicle maintenance could develop skills by using Microsoft Excel. Uh, I refer to that as data skills now, it's a starting point of data skills. They create a spreadsheet uh, to input uh, costs and uh, different parts, which then they would uh, do certain calculations. Uh, as also as part of that vehicle maintenance delivery, they could create a video check for customers during car servicing. So my colleague uh, Alistair Tams at uh, Midlothian Campus at the moment is piloting with vehicle maintenance students where he, the, the students are working in the workshop but they have a camera strapped to them. So they're actually going through what repairs they're doing, that video comes back, they edit it and they do a, a, an audio uh, input as well to the, 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 the piece of video. That would then uh, uh, be a, a, a piece of uh, digital learning. Uh, but in the real world, organisations like Arnold Clark and other like Ford all use that technology. Again, it's relevant and it's happening, ha actually happening in the workshop. My last example is a learner studying sport. And I touched on this one earlier. And the reason why I touched on this one earlier because I wanted to actually talk about it a bit more. So a learner studying sport coaching could develop digital uh, skills by using Microsoft Dell and Prezi. Uh, what they would do is they would collect the data using a Fitbit device for a physical activity that would they would take part in. They would collect that data, put it into a spreadsheet, and then create graphs and charts from it. They would then use the graphs and charts and the results and add it to Prezi to present back the results. Now, what we I could do quite easily is, yeah, they could, I could say it's mandatory to use Microsoft Excel and it's man mandatory to use Prezi, but I want to be at a stage where I want to give them choice and make a decision. So they could use Google Sheets or they could use PowerPoint or they could use Adobe Spark because uh, Adobe Spark actually develops and uh, video, but it also creates slideshows. Out of these three examples I've given, 
across all the examples, the learners would also develop other core and essential skills, such as writing, using numbers, graphical information, and also presentation skills and many, many more. The stage I want to get at is I want them to be able to identify what other skills, essential skills they have developed. I know I think uh, Grant Taylor is actually uh, logged into here and I know Grant and I have a lot of conversations before. It's about the student being able to identify the other essential skills they've developed. So when they go to the interview, oh, I did this project at college and I also developed problem solving, working with others, using numbers all through a digital literacy project. But actually it's not digital literacy, it's a sports project. So it's important that we think about digital literacy either as standalone units or we think about it as part of our vocational delivery, uh, uh, whether we integrate it or whether, whether we embed it, uh, but it's important it's right across the curriculum. Uh, so give examples of digital literacy activities in your own college or organization. So again, if you could do the same again, is type your comments to the chat window area and I'll try and pick up on some. And I'm happy, Jason, if you want to pick on some, up on some as well, if, if you wish. I'll keep an eye. Thanks. And I'll give it a couple of minutes and then I'll, I'll move on to the, the, the last stages of the presentation. I wonder if we've got, if Grant Taylor's in the room, I have no doubt he'll have something to type. Uh, sorry, Grant, for putting you on the spot. So, Owen, thanks, Owen. Online on demand training courses via recorded video. Yep, good. That's a, that's a nice one. Yeah. Uh, currently rolling out digital skills program on future learn MUC in partnership with oh great yeah i know about the, the, the these uh, uh, that organization because i know we work in uh, the ember college we work in partnership with bridge to business and we've been using some of their future learn uh, materials and they're very good uh, digital capabilities, self-assessment, discover digital course, key part of future talent program, cybersecurity. Yeah, cybersecurity is very important. Uh, I like to refer to it as cyber skills now, rather than talk about uh, keeping information safe. I think cyber skills is a, a more modern name for it. Within JISC, we have Yammer channels for sharing tips and tricks. Everyone likes to show their technical prowess by posting a tip. That's quite good, yeah. And it's been able to collect all this and then share it, which I, I think that's quite a good uh, tool to do that uh, through Yammer. Yes, great. Right, what I'll do is I'll move back to the the presentation. Again, you can continue typing. You can still uh, add to question one and question two. There we are. So uh, this brings me to the SQA digital literacy units. Uh, November, December time, uh, the SQA published new units, standalone units. Um, Please note they are standalone units and not a national progression award. They are standalone units for level three to six. And the units have been designed to equip the essential digital literacy skills needed to safely use a range of technologies for everyday life, for learning and the workplace. Uh, now, as part of my presentation, I could show you the units, but I'm not going to do that. Uh, but you with the resource that will be sent out that you'll have access to, you'll have a direct link to these units. Uh, I quite like them uh, on the basis that they are up to date and they, if we were to compare it to ICT core skills, ICT core skills is good, however, it's quite limited. I think the digital literacy uh, units uh, 
are, are a very good alternative uh, because they're very open. Uh, they look at what I would say, they look at the six elements of uh, JISC's digital literacy, the capabilities. Uh, can I add, I haven't written these units just in case anybody uh, thinks that I have. I've not written these units. Uh, these, these were uh, just published November, December, uh, but I've actually given feedback on them. They've been updated in January, uh, but it also covers a lot of the digital well-being uh, areas and also the meta skills where it encourages centres to do project-based learning. It encourages to make it relevant to the vocational area. And it talks about things like cloud-based technologies. And if we actually have a think about what Virtual Bridge has done over the last couple of weeks, uh, whether it's OneNote uh, or whether it's uh, Microsoft Teams or the Google applications that have been covered or if you think about Walter's delivery when looking at the productive side of things of, with, with uh, digital skills, that's all in there and it's all in the digital uh, literacy units. Uh, very much project-based and very much uh, looking at co-creation. So I'm going to end this presentation uh, by saying it's important to support everyone's digital literacy so that they can effectively participate socially, culturally, in learning, life and work. If anybody wants to get in contact with me afterwards, that's my details, but I will be sending resources out this presentation the links to the JISC information and also to the SQA uh, units for digital literacy. And it's worth having a look because it's alternative to the core skills ICT. Thank you very much, David. Yeah, no problem. I'll just stop sharing, will I? Yep, yep go on there and we can see all the feet if you want to gallery view indeed. Uh, thank you very much for that. And so uh, the checks in the post for your endorsement of the six elements approach from Jason. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've got to say, Jason, that uh, w w when these came out in uh, it was 2013 14, it was good timing for the Delhi University project because that's what we based the delivery on. And it, it, it gave us a framework to explain and deliver what we wanted to do in India, because uh, that's a different culture altogether. So, so it, it saved us a lot of work. Well, I will point out they were, of course, developed in very much in conjunction with uh, the sectors as a whole that we support. So Good. thank you, you all, for feeding into that. Well, if I may abuse my position by uh, getting the first question in, yeah. um, then uh, well, we know that competencies, and again, you very much take your point about uh, developing the digital literacy mm -hmm. in the context of the, the, the students' discipline area or what they're working towards. We know that from the digital experience insights surveys, though, they, they, they just offers in the institutions do, that the perception of students as to how much opportunity they're getting to develop digital skills is low because uh, actually we're doing such a good job incorporating it into their learning. Um, how do we raise the students' confidence and appreciation of the higher levels of digital skills that they're actually getting? Yeah, I mean, I, I think uh, you're right. Uh, I think I, I personally I think it can be a bit patchy right across uh, uh, colleges and delivery where there is a lot of good digital uh, skills uh, across different courses and it has been embedded. Uh, I think integration and also a, a student actually seeing that is relevant to their course. So if you think about a, a level four uh, program or a level five program and there's a student that has core skills ICT, forget about digital literacy units, on, on their course, they will turn around and say, why do I need to do this? This is a unit. Uh, I've done this at school. I've done this in a previous course. So the buy-in needs to be that it's absolutely 100% contextualized to the vocational area. So it doesn't matter what 
level it is, uh, so integration and making it relevant would, would be my response to your question. Thank you. And um, well, it's Kenji's put in the chat to invite any of you to unmute yourselves and make a comment or question towards David. Who's going to shout out first? A Kenji on you go. <laughs> so this is just uh, an excuse to get Grant into the conversation, yeah. actually. So <laughs> I, I recognize that there is a lot of um, digital skills being introduced as part of normal delivery. And what people do, the skills that they have, they're not always aware of how to articulate that in a mm. sense of telling employers and others what skills they have. And I know that kind of work goes on in West College Scotland and that Grant Taylor ha has done a lot of work in that area about helping students just articulate the skills that they have. And, and, and maybe he could have some, some comment about that if I unmute him. Thanks, Kenji. Um, yeah, for a while we've had a piece of software called Yes, Your Essential Skills, where students mm -hmm. log on and reflect and articulate on what skills they develop. Now, it's not mandatory within the college, and we have about 1,500 students who are engaging in that. And it depends, all depends on the staff, and not just one or two staff, but the whole department really push that. So, and I know SDS are, are doing looking at a skills reflection tool now as part of the my world of work. But the key is, is changing perception and changing the kind of education that we're not just teachers of maths or teachers of IT or teachers of core skills, we're teachers of skills. And we use the medium of the subject to teach those skills. And at the end of every lesson, having a reflection time where students have time to reflect on what skills and all the new education philosophy coming forward with meta skills and you know industry for years have been seeing our students come out of college and university and they can't reflect on what skills they have and this is something that's been going on for a while and the students that use the the, the piece of software are, are are really forward thinking and you know we've, we've got evidence that when they go for an interview they understand what skills and they understand the skills they need for that employment as well Happy to share the link um, to what we use. I can, I can, I can share that. I can put it. I can send it to David, and people can have a wee look at this piece of software. Yeah. I know I was in discussions with SDS on their skills reflection tool. The problem with the SDS one is you can't gather evidence on yeah. what skills the students are developing. You can't see college-wide skills. You can't see per course, per unit of what skills they're developing. So you can't have that professional dialogue either with the staff on the skills that each student are developing or the units that are developing the skills either. And it's great for professional development. So staff can have conversations on skill development within units. Thank you very much, Grant and Kenji for introduction <laughs> there. Um, any further questions? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. Elsie, David, and I work at Slide Hill. I am a Spanish teacher. Um, we were talking here about developing confidence in students. Yeah. But I also think, for example, that we have to develop that confident confidence in teachers. Well. Yes. Confident, you know, in technology. I, I don't feel confident, and yeah. I'm in college for five hours a week, but I really want to develop my digital skills because you know like this shows us that we need to develop them yeah I a lot. like in this week this week has been wonderful because i have learned a lot well I, I'm, I'm learning a lot you know, I yeah. have but i think that you know because if we are teacher teachers of skills we also have to be sure that we have those skills and i do i can see that everyone here is quite good and that you all have a lot of skills in this digital world but I don't and I can imagine that there are other teachers than me and I don't know what else to do because I'm really into it and I can now spend time doing it but, yeah. you know but when we're teaching yeah. we have the, yeah. the so like when okay. we're in the college when, when we're there we, we don't have the time to spend like these hours here sure I mean I think you've you, you've raised a good point and, and question there. Uh, I mean, I, I, it's essential. C, CPD is essential for, for any uh, educator. Uh, but, but with digital learning, I've always thought that there should be a digital learning program for teachers. Yeah. Uh, 
and I know as part of the professional learning that I see in there, uh, college develop network are a good source, uh, but also internal, there should be a lot more sharing of practice. And Kenji has mentioned earlier on about having a week for remote working. Uh, and he, he, Kenji, you can talk in a minute about that rather than me talk about something you've come up with. Uh, mm -hmm. But but I think that there needs to be uh, mixed curriculum staff working on digital skills learning uh, mm -hmm. within each college. But there should be a framework like the JISC framework that we are all following. So that there's a standardization there. Now, I'm a quite a creative teacher, but there is that standardization. Standardization is quite a creative process. Uh, I'm also an SQA uh, external verifier for my sins. And uh, if there's a framework and there's a good foundation, then you can be more creative. And the, going back to the, uh, because I've mentioned it in the presentation, going back to the, the, the six elements, that's the framework. Uh, so it's internal, using CDN, but there should be, you know, UK or Scotland wide, there should be a digital learning framework for teachers. Yeah. Kenji. Thank you very much. Well, so comprehensive and coherent. Uh, we've got to half an hour and so I'm going to uh, close the formal part yep. of by thanking David for it. Um, no problem. The conversation will continue afterwards. Thank you yep. very much for your presentation, David, and your questions, but please hang on uh, for further informal discussion. Yep. Thanks.